Hey everybody, Paparina here. Um, as you may have noticed, I haven't uploaded any Animorphs videos in a while. Uh, the reason for that is because my computer committed ritual suicide. Um, and I kind of lost the files, and I'm working on recreating the video as fast as I can, and hopefully we should get that up. But in the meantime, I am here with Quantum Joker. Say hello, Quantum. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Um, and we're going to discuss a little matter that's been on our minds for a while. 2001 A Space Odyssey. As reviewed by uh, Confused Matthew. Yes. Uh, we're going to offer both our own personal opinions on 2001 A Space Odyssey. But the main point of this video is probably to uh, discuss Confused Matthew's recent review of it. So, Quantum, you want to go first? Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh well, I, uh, I purchased uh, my copy of 2001 A Space Odyssey from, uh, uh, well, from a garage sale when I was around eight. Um, this was the first uh, Stanley Kubrick film I saw, and uh, well, I was mesmerized from the very first viewing. Um, I, even then, I, I found it to be a, a, well, a, a contemplative... Uh, beautiful film with um, well uh, s some very engaging character moments well primarily in the form of how um, I I suppose the the uh, the how segment is is the most comprehensive narrative of the film um, uh, but say I f uh, well I when when viewed from act to act, uh, 2001, uh, I, I suppose it, it does feel a little disjointed. Um, but when taken as a whole, and well, uh, when I say gained internet and, and uh, read more about the film, I I realized that um, the film is essentially you, you could easily take it as as a well a, a, an epic detailing human evolution. From say our, our humble beginnings in Africa to well a state of transcendence, uh, when when taken as a whole, um, special effects and production values included, um, few films or well n um, no films to my knowledge before then, and few films since then have reached the same scope, the same meticulous detail. Um, the same, uh, well, a similar extent of familiarity um, and and depth of meaning than two thousand one. Say it, it, um, it creates a very familiar future, and yet it also uh, it also plots out our journey to that future and beyond. It, it's it's one of the best looking films I've ever seen. And um, uh, well, one of the most intelligent films um, I, you, you can you could ever watch. Yeah, certainly, and it's certainly probably one of the more non-traditional, famous American films. Hmm. Uh, I encountered Two Thousand One: Space Odyssey probably when I was twelve, mm -hmm. and uh, it, along with a few other films like uh, Goodfellas and uh, The Godfather, and I guess I was on a mafia high and all that <laughs> stuff, but. Uh, uh, made me realize uh, exactly how expansive and how uh, unique films really were. Hmm. Uh, I should point out, because my viewers don't really know what my movie viewing habits are, um, I'm not really a, a mainstream film kind of guy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Criterion Collection nerd, and <laughs> I watch a lot of foreign films and a lot of uh, old classic epics and uh, a lot of experimental art films. Same. Yeah, and um, uh, 2001: Space Odyssey was my one of my first steps in that. It was the it was so exceptionally non-traditional. It didn't fit in with all the classic narrative Hollywood kind of films, um, and it got me interested in getting into more kind of things. On its own merits, it's like you say the uh, the film covers a really great scope of humanity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to get into this a little later on to our Confused Matthew bit, but uh, 
it really uh, shows just how far we've come and how far we could go hmm. uh, when we, we, with as much as one simple cut, you know, from from bone to spaceship, and uh, I think Stanley Kubrick's was largely uh, enthusiastic about our future concerning things like our, our journeys into space, hmm. which is why he, he gave the film a, a, a deadline, basically, you know, 2001. <laughs> he said we could be here by 2001. There's no reason why we can't. Hmm. And uh, Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of... Uh, philosophical and artistic interpretations of things like the, the Stargate ending and all that stuff. Mm. Uh, and nobody's really able to pin down an ending. But I think that's a that's a good thing. I think uh, it gets everybody's cogs turning, gets everybody thinking. Mm. Um, and I think that's the film's greatest strength is that it's a film most people, or I don't know, some people... Uh, not confused, Matthew, uh, goes away from thinking, okay, what did I just see and what does that mean? And that's the most important thing the film does. And uh, that's the reason I love it so much. I I agree all the way. Yes. Um, what, uh, what's your by the way, personal... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, by the way... Well, um, are you at all versed in, uh, say, uh, the more academic interpretations of um, of two thousand one? Say, uh, two thousand one as a remake of uh, the Odyssey, or or Alzo Sprach Zarathustra, uh, sorry, or or, or um, I think the Zarathustra epic. I've got the name right. Do you know much much about those? Uh, well, uh, I don't. I I thought I'd I'd uh, ask you. Uh, not really. Um, Have you bought into those you, at all? Well, uh, you can make those kind of connections on a lot of things. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, two perpendicular lines makes a cross. And mm -hmm. Somebody making a journey makes the Odyssey. It's. <laughs> you know, I I don't put too much stock into that unless it's mm -hmm. really obvious. Some people have even, uh, uh, well, they, they've even framed, well, um, regarded 2001 as, uh, well, a, a various scenes in 2001 as a, as a metaphor for um, birth or, or, or sex. Um, of, of course, most obviously, the, uh, the, the quote-unquote space fetus would, would lend um, um, credence to, well, um, to that theory, but and um, but um, I rarely well I, I rarely computed any of that um, as well that uh, possible meaning whenever whenever I watched watch the film. Now, I take it into consideration. It's it's not my. Uh, I, I don't take it as a, a literal birth. Mm. After putting thought into it, uh, yeah, maybe more of a, a spiritual rebirth. A, uh, at best. You know, at that point in the film, um, David Bowman reaches the basically the edge of was then the, the the known universe. Like mm. we don't really know what's beyond this point, um, and you could see that. And I'm not saying this is right, but you could see that as the whole uh, space fetus rebirthing as a way of showing us. Uh, you know, just how young of a race we are. Just we're, mm. we're we're still just you know fetuses in terms of our presence in the universe. Mm. Um, so that's that's one way you could see it. Yes. Um, it reminds me. Have you seen uh, Carl Sagan's Cosmos? I haven't, but I I, I have actually watched uh, Cosmos remixed. Um, you, you might have come across the uh, music video. Um, uh, assembled yeah. out of out of out of um, you know sound clips from the documentary. Um, I, I haven't I haven't seen the documentary, but I have watched that. Well, there's one there's one scene in the first episode 
<laughs> uh, where Carl Sagan has had made this giant calendar, mm-hmm. uh, and that represented all the current history up to it, it condensed all the current history of the universe uh, down into this kind of twelve month calendar and all that stuff. If we if we simplify it like that, he said, then all of human existence, uh, everything humanity's ever done would take place in uh, the last few seconds, yes. the last minute of the last day on December 31st, um, which is which shows just how little we've actually done in the universe, mm. just how, how, how new we are to it. Mm. And I think that's s- similar to the idea of the space fetus. I think so. 